What's going on, guys? So the Linux Foundation has introduced some significant changes to the PSI exams starting on June 22nd. Now, if you don't know what PSI is, they're the ones that are responsible for handling the proctored online exams for many different subjects and certifications from the Linux Foundation. These updates specifically affect the Kubernetes certification hands-on exams, which includes the CKA, the CKAD, and the CKS. In this video, I will be going through all of the major changes that have been made, and this should better prepare you for how the testing environment is going to be on the day of the exam. Head over to CodeCloud.com and get access to DevOps courses created by experts in the industry. Whether you are just starting out or someone who has extensive experience, CodeCloud has all the resources you need and is designed to take your DevOps career to the next level. With CodeCloud, you gain access to hands-on labs built into each course for practice. Work on real-world tasks and problems with CodeCloud Engineer Pro and gain the experience and confidence you need to prepare for your first DevOps job. Start your DevOps journey with CodeCloud. So what's changed with the exam? Well, the primary update involves a migration from the PSI's exams local platform to the new PSI bridge. Do note that it's still within PSI, it's just on a different platform. And with this migration to PSI bridge, there's going to be five significant changes. Let's take a look at these now. Online exams require students to check in with the proctor, which includes showing identification documents, scanning your room with the webcam, as well as the proctor providing some basic information regarding what is and isn't allowed during the exam. With the new updates, the check-in process is no longer involves a proctor, as it utilizes a self-check-in process where you can upload scans of your IDs and provide photos of the room where you are taking the exam. This process is both easier and faster for both the exam takers and the proctors, providing a more smooth and hassle-free experience. In addition, you can also check in 30 minutes early as opposed to the previous 15 minutes, which gives you some more preparation time. And this extra time can also be used to troubleshoot any potential technical issues. In the old platform, the online exams relied on a browser extension that would need to be installed to allow you to share your screen with the proctor for monitoring. This is no longer the case in the new platform as exam takers will now use the PSI provided browser while taking the exam. PSI has stated that this change will provide more security and privacy for exam takers while also eliminating technical and compatibility issues with installing extensions on different operating systems and browsers. In the old exam environment, exam takers were allowed to make use of multiple monitors, as long as the proctor has visibility to all of them through screen sharing. And this is great because it would allow you to have the exam on one monitor and the documentation on another. Since the new exam environment will make use of PSI's browser application, only one instance of this can be running on your machine which means that you will no longer be able to take the exam with multiple monitors. Now, if you have a laptop but still want to use the external monitor for improved readability, you can do that as long as the main laptop display is disabled. This next change is perhaps the most controversial one on the list. Since exam takers in the old platforms would use their normal web browser, it allowed them to set up their own bookmarks that links to different parts of the documentation, as long as they link to one of the allowed sites. This was great because it allowed exam takers to navigate the documentation more efficiently and find specific information they needed to answer the question. In the new environment, since exam takers are expected to use the PSI provided browser, they no longer have access to their personal bookmarks anymore, and they must rely solely on navigating around the documentation sites manually. The final change is going to be the biggest change on the list. The exam will now be moved from a remote terminal into a complete remote desktop environment. For anyone that has ever worked on a remote desktop environment, especially one that goes over the internet, knows that this is a less than ideal experience. Unlike working on a native desktop experience, remote desktop environments are always slower and they tend to have a distracting delay. So please keep this in mind when taking your next exam. All right, let's go through all of the UI changes now. Previously in the old interface, when you take the exam, there are two main sections in the user interface. The left side is for navigating around the questions, and over to the right side, you have the remote terminal where you can type in the commands. In the new exam, the left side is still where you can see the questions. However, the right side is now a complete Linux remote desktop environment. Now let's take a look at the new remote desktop environment as there are a few important things that need to be pointed out. The first one is the terminal. Notice how the terminal is now launched from inside the remote desktop and that is what you will use in order to perform the required tasks. Second one is of course the browser. Kubernetes certification exams allow test takers to open documentation sites to be used as a reference. 
Previously, they would just be open in a separate tab, but now the browser will actually be inside the remote desktop. It is also important to note that the pre-installed browser on the machine is Firefox. This may be a big deal for people who primarily use Chrome or Safari. If you haven't used Firefox before, it is recommended that you practice using it before taking the exam. Let's now move on to keyboard shortcuts. Keyboard shortcuts can be a bit tricky when you're working with more than one desktop. Let me give you a tip on two common operations that you'll be doing a fair amount during the exam. For copying text, instead of just doing Control C, you should now do Control Shift C. For pasting, it should be Control Shift V, or you can use the middle mouse button. And last and most reliable, you can just use the right click context menu and then select either copy or paste. The last thing we would want is for anyone to accidentally close their online exam because they hit the wrong shortcut key. So what does this mean for you? If you're someone scheduled to take any Kubernetes certification exam, whether it's the CKA, the CKAD, or the CKS, after June 25th, 2022, you will most likely be taking the exam in the new platform. Knowing what to expect beforehand can definitely help as you take the exam. Each Kubernetes certification is valuable to any DevOps professional. The demand for IT professionals skilled with container technologies is growing and rapidly increasing. Get started learning Kubernetes and get certified in the process. Check out CodeCloud.com and gain access to preparation courses for the CKA, CKAD, and the CKS certifications. There are certainly mixed reactions from the community with regard to the Linux Foundation's decision to migrate to a remote desktop environment for the exam. However, looking at the benefits, it has indeed become more secure and the experience is now streamlined for all candidates more so than ever. It provides better privacy and helps prevent cheating. And all of these benefits combined increase the value of successfully completing one of these certifications. As the migration is new and has just been completed, we can only expect more improvements from here on out. For more details on the migration and new exam changes, you can refer to the following CNCF articles Links are in the description as well. All right, so that's it for me, and I hope this video helps you in preparation for the exams, and I'll see you in the next video.